Hello, I'm Pastor Daryl McLaren. I want to thank you for viewing. I want to speak to you concerning the greatest danger in the church today. I remember when I was a little boy, I was born and raised, I'm the fourth generation of ministers, and I was born and raised in church uh, all of my life, ever since I can remember at uh, four, three and four years old, I was in church on a continual basis. This is what church was like to me. Every service I went to, no matter where I was, whether I was with my mom and dad when they were pastoring or with them while they were traveling or if I was with my grandparents, uh, Reverend David and Bessie Thurman, uh, pastored in Oklahoma, I was in a church that first of all gave a clarion call uh, to everybody in the church uh, offering the opportunity for anyone that did not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior to be able to come uh, at the foot of the cross and accept Jesus as their personal Savior. Uh, altar calls were always made. People were always getting saved. The second thing I always saw at our services were that we uh, continually offered an opportunity for people to come and be delivered and set free from bondages, from uh, evil spirits, being possessed uh, by demonic powers, uh, being uh, oppressed, uh, discouraged or despondent, fighting uh, mental battles. There was always people there that was full of the Spirit, full of the power of God to pray for people and to see them delivered. It, all of my life, it was awesome to see people ministered to by the Spirit of God. The third thing I was continually accustomed in seeing was people having the opportunity of coming to the altar and being prayed for. Whether they were sick, uh, they might have been fighting afflictions in their body, they might have had diseases, whatever the problem was, uh, there were hands uh, laid upon them, as the scripture tells us, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And that's exactly what I have seen all of my life. That's the way I was raised. I've made comments before. Uh, you can look in every city. Uh, I made a statement on my blog uh, this week. I, I could go all over here in Asheville, North Carolina, and our, the, our county we live in is Buncombe County. I could go everywhere in Buncombe County. And if, for every church where you could find these three things being offered, like Jesus offered every day of his life, if I had a dime for every church that offered these three things, I would not be able to buy uh, a, a barely a McDonald hamburger. It is something that disturbs me as we continually see evil approaching within our nation. And we see more and more people neglecting the house of God, losing the desire for church. Uh, don't feel responsible that they need to be in service when the doors of the church are open. They don't feel the pressure of wanting to mature in God and grow in the Lord. Uh, in our society today, we're blessed with beautiful churches. And I think beautiful churches is a great blessing. We're, we're blessed with wonderful choirs. I love choirs. We're best with, uh, blessed with talented musicians. And we have great motivating messages. And we have uh, uh, wonderful programs to reach people. Many churches have just dozens and dozens of things to get involved in. But when it's all over and said and done, 
There are very few people that walk with the Lord in his power and in his authority. Is there something wrong with the word of God? Can we really believe the promises of God? Greater works than these shall ye do because I go to my Father. Jesus said that. Did he say that just to entertain us? Did he say that just to fill in spaces because he knew the Bible would be completed uh, hundreds of years later? Is there a possibility that the Christians have missed it somehow and we're not supposed to pursue the Spirit of God? We're not supposed to pursue the power of God? We're not to follow after uh, uh, maturing in the Lord and standing on our authority and exercising our faith and our strength? What is our problem today? I see... One thing that I truly believe is one of the greatest dangers in our church today, and it is not the devil. I remember the comedian on television many, many years ago, Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it, always blaming things on the devil. Well, I want you to know this is something we cannot blame completely upon the devil. I do not believe the devil is the most dangerous thing in the church. I believe the spirit of unconcernedness, the spirit of complacency, the spirit of believing, well, I'm just not that kind of person and I don't think I will ever be able to be that way. I believe the greatest danger in our churches today is the lack, number one, the lack of spiritual motivation. People are not motivated to serve God. They feel it's an obligation to go on Sunday and hope to God the choir doesn't sing long. And for sure, if it's a church where people are allowed to worship and to enter into the praise of the Lord like Harvest Time Assembly is. For God's sakes, we pray that the Holy Spirit don't take charge because we'll be in the services for uh, to one or two o'clock. I've got things to do. I've got to eat. I didn't eat a big breakfast. You know, it, it's pathetic that our excuses seem to be so important and they mean nothing to us whereby we are forsaking the very things that's going to provide safety and protection for us in this end hour. When, excuse my expression, when all hell breaks loose in America and things are crumbling and we are seeing the judgments of God and many other things coming upon our nation. I, I, excuse me for getting loud. Uh, but I am so disturbed as I look at the church world today. We have no spiritual motivation. We, we have very few Christian people that are truly hungry for more of God, more power, more authority. Call a prayer meeting in your church, a two-hour prayer meeting, and see how many Christian people show up. You'll hear of every excuse in the world, but take a drive by their house. You know what they're doing? They're working in their garden. They're in the uh, house on the internet. They're playing some crazy games on Facebook or something, or in a recliner watching television every night. We have no desire. We have no hunger for God. I believe also that we lack the desire to seek the face of the Lord. The word of the Lord says if we will draw nigh unto God, He will draw nigh unto us. Why is it that we cannot stand on the word? Why is it that we cannot exercise our faith and put our confidence in God and say, God, I am not going to bend nor bow to temptation and I am not going to quit seeking you. I'm not going to quit pressing in to the spirit realm until I get a breakthrough. 
I also used to see people go to the altars and cry out to God. I saw people praying and believing in receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they would cry and pray. And they wouldn't go home. Some of them would stay in the church till 12 and 1 and 2 o'clock. And if they didn't get it to the next service, they'd be back. How long has it been since you've seen someone stay in your church and pray for hours and not be interested in going home or rushing out to the restaurant and eating? Folks, I'm telling you, if we do not wake ourselves up, I believe calamity is going to hit this nation. I believe judgment is going to come to this nation. And I believe that there will be a time in our nation that God is going to drive people to their knees. Now, I don't believe that will work for many people because I believe that as times become more severe, that people will continue to neglect themselves with the assembling in the house of God. They will get away from church. We're trying to redesign churches. We're dragging in the couches and the chairs. We're afraid people are afraid to sit in pews. We got to bring the coffee and the ice cream and all of this. I don't know why most of them just don't stay home. All they want to do is have a little fellowship. And I believe in fellowship. Don't get me wrong. All they want to do is have a little fellowship and talk and go home. And they're not interested in changing. They're not interested in receiving what God has for them. All they want to do is satisfy the emptiness within their hearts. And I have news for people that will not satisfy them. I remember so vividly someone telling me about a very famous minister. I'll not mention his name. He's already gone on to be with uh, the Lord. Uh, he, he had an outstanding, successful uh, ministry all of his life. The Lord visited him in either a dream or vision. I cannot remember that portion. And the Lord spoke to him. And he said, the, the crowds, the size of Wednesday night services will be the people will be the percentage that will go in the rapture when I return. You know, the average church today has 3% of their total attendance attending on Wednesday night. Thank God Harvest Time Assembly has a greater amount than that. Has 3%. The Lord spoke to him and said that will be the size of, or the amount of people that will go from that church in the rapture. You say, well, Brother McLaren, everybody's a Christian. Everybody's uh, working and serving the Lord. Let me say something to you. I do not believe everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of God. I don't believe a person just because they say that, that they are Christians and hang a cross around their neck is going to go in the rapture. Just a few statements. The Word of God tells us that we must be hoping, longing, looking, and praying, and crying for the Lord's return in order to be ready for the rapture. There is a higher calling. There is a higher calling for people that will go in the rapture. Do I believe there will be some Christians that call themselves Christians left and go through part of the tribulation? I do believe that. I do believe that. I believe the word of God backs that up. We must be very cautious. And I challenge you. I, I, I plead with you. Allow the Holy Spirit to deal with you. God has a great ministry for you. God has a great calling for you. But you must be willing to pay the price. You must be willing to seek God with all of your heart. Look into the mirror of the Spirit. And see tonight, have you prepared yourself this week for the coming of the Lord? Let's not be the greatest problem in our church today. Let's be the answer to our churches. God bless you.